and light itself is not more persistent than the stream of feminine discourse. Edwin Abbott, Flatland. Hello again and welcome back. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. At the beginning of chapter 49, Sancho's sophisticated reflection on his experience as ruler amazes everyone. Anticipating the modern idea of crony capitalism, Sancho observes how difficult it is to resist the importunities of those seeking favoritism. He notes how citizens become irate when they don't get handouts from their rulers. They curse them and spread rumors. They even slander their lineages. Populist resentment and racism often undercut very powerful people in early modern Spain. Cervantes then turns to Sancho's desire to eat a traditional Spanish stew of Burgos, known as rotten pots, which should recall Sancho's sorrow over the loss of the flesh pots of Egypt at Camacho's wedding. In other words, Sancho has finally become a kind of pharaoh. Ironically, however, he claims to value equality. When God makes it dawn, he makes it dawn for all. Did you know? Governmental corruption functions by concentrating benefits and dispersing costs. The contradictions of being a ruler are on display at Barataria. Sancho's butler informs him that the people appreciate the soft manner of governing that your mercy has demonstrated at the beginning. But Sancho alludes again to the picaresque symbol sine qua non. Once again, I say that my sustenance should be looked after as should that of my gray, which is all that matters in this business. Then he embarks on a nocturnal patrol. Let's make the rounds. In order to purify Barataria, of all types of human filth and vagabond people. Sancho's allegory here is political. People who are indigent and lazy are to the Republic what the drones are to the hive, for they eat up all the honey that the worker bees produce. Quixotic Mission. Which dish does the great governor Sancho Panza want to eat? A, fish and chips, B, rotten pots, C, chimichangas. Correct answer, B, rotten pots. Again, Sancho resolves three specific cases. The first involves gambling. A witness to a card game demands a tip from a man who won 1,000 reales. The gambler accuses the witness of extortion and refuses to pay the traditional tip. Careful readers will note that the witness is corrupt. And more careful readers will note that when Sancho rules that the gambler must pay 130 reales, this is the exact amount of money that was at issue between the creditor and the debtor of Don Quixote Part 2, Chapter 45. When Sancho contemplates banning gambling houses, a scribe points out that it is better to regulate gambling. This discussion is interrupted by the knight's second case. Here we investigate the limits of royal power in an episode that recalls the galley slaves of Don Quixote Part 1, Chapter 22, and anticipates modern debates over the rights of citizens confronted by the police. Note how the man is presumed guilty. According to the arresting officer, he started to run like a deer, a sign that he must be some delinquent. The man is cheeky, and so Sancho, behaving like an absolutist king, I am the very heir, he says, orders him thrown in jail. The case turns on a technicality as the arrested man tells our governor that he can control his body but not his mind. No matter how much power your mercy has, it will not be enough to force me to sleep in jail. Sancho is infuriated. Do you have some guardian angel who will release you? but when he finally grasps the man's literal point that shackles and chains cannot force him to sleep in jail if he stays awake, he lets him go. There's a defense of freedom of religious conscience here. However, Sancho's final advice to the man evinces a pragmatic truth. From now on, don't joke around with officers of the law because you'll come across one who'll react to the joke by busting your skull. In other words, 
don't run from the police. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating text. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.